Here we are heading on out again. You gotta come check out this ride. Watch this, it'll be worth it. Just to watch the way other folks drive. Now in the interstate system. Using this to get to a westbound route. To take us to today's hotspot. Now Pet is the first of our westbound routes. Interstate 70. They'll probably get onto the old pike eventually. Old National Pike. But here I pick up 70 to save myself some time. And now we're on it. And I've got to cross the Patapsco. With the CSX old main line down below. I went straight to the Indian Dam Tunnel, and I drive beneath this bridge on the way there. There we go. Too much information. Now approaching the Sykesville exit. Well, we can't leave by Clarksville, can we? Normally we take the original National Pike, which parallels to the left about half a mile. But I'll stay on 70 as far as Frederick to save some time. I pick up old US 340 from that point. Up ahead here is a truck inspection station, which I've never seen open. At least not on weekends, which is what this is. So if you got a bad truck, bring one through in the weekend. You're welcome here. We'll let you go. Now in the Mount Airy area, and about to ascend Pars Ridge, made famous by the Beano Railroad and their successors. And over top of the ridge, one can tell what kind of day it is by looking for distant mountains. Let's have a look, see. Just in mountains. Well, I really can't tell from here. But in a few minutes, we'll be able to tell better. And now descending down the other side of the ridge. Got a faint mountain in the distance, Catoctin Mountain, but I almost can't tell quite yet though. Wait till we get closer. And now the mountains are starting to come into view. The first of which is Catoctin. And now passing through Frederick, where things are still being worked on for the past 10 years. Oh, a frog pond over there. Of course, I catch that sort of thing. Look at my channel name. Up here, picking up USD 40 for a bit. But I plan to get off onto the original 340, not the new four lane highway. Here is the modern day US 340. And on the original 340, known as MD 180. This was US 340 up until 1967. It's roads like this that I grew up on. 
back when I was growing up, there weren't that many freeways or four-lane highways. Now, I'm not that old. But I did grow up on roads like this. Traveling the East Coast. Now crossing over Catoctin Mountain. This road takes a lower summit than do US 40 or I-70. And now arriving in Jefferson, Maryland. The quaint hamlet of Jefferson. And this is downtown Jefferson, complete with jogger. I'd rather play Frogger. A little cool steeple there. We'll be seeing some nice towns like this along our route. Now, of course, the four-lane highway bypasses the town. But at least it didn't become a ghost town. Up ahead, original 340 bears to the right, and I'll bear with it. Staying straight takes you back onto the main highway, the current route. We'll stay on the old road. In front of us looms South Mountain. And now approaching the Brunswick area. And up ahead is MD 27, 17 rather. And one of those inane traffic circles I can't stand. There was a flashing light for the longest time. Now it's a gosh dang circle. And our one time usual sheets. That was the Blair Witch Project. But no witches right now. Let's continue on. We'll stop with the sheets later on or something. Brunswick's to the south, to the left. About a mile. Yeah, CSX territory. And up ahead once again, South Mountain. There's a gap in the mountain this road goes through. Well, it ends under the four lane highway, then we go through the gap. And what's happening here? We're being passed illegally. Called on chip, just for you. Just watching this video. Now coming into a place known as Knoxville. Not the one you think. We're not in Tennessee. Might as well be though. The way this looks. You know, block the road. Good idea. Got you on chip too. I'm telling you, these yokels around here. To the left is CSX, of course. A nice turn signal that car in front of me gave. But up ahead, we dip beneath the current US 340, then merge onto it, back at you, and are curling around South Mountain. And now our Potomac River crossing. We cross over CSX as well. Now we enter Virginia. But not for long. In about half a mile we'll cross into West Virginia. Then back into Virginia again a ways later. 
This route crosses state lines several times. So keep watching. It's free. And if you were crossing to West Virginia, I told you. Wild, wonderful, this place. And up around the bend, our crossing of the Shenandoah River. That bridge opened in the late 90s. I could video the previous bridge through here too. And of course to her right about a mile is Harper's Ferry. Which you can get to by hanging a right up ahead. And somebody back there up there just hung that right. Or we can walk it too, it's up to you. Up ahead we'll cut to the right and pick up a smidge of the old road. Just for a few miles. Because up ahead you see an old paper mill and I want to see if it still operates. A lot of the ones in Maryland closed down. Looks like it still does. Whose turn is it anyway? Going right takes you to Shepherdstown. That's a future trip. I think it still operates. And about to cross the CSX Shenandoah line. All does Shenandoah River, not Shenandoah Valley. Because Shenandoah Junction is still a few miles from here to our right. That's a future ride, too. But most of you have already been there. And upload videos to prove it. And back on the current route, as we approach the Charlestown area. Now in downtown Charlestown, West Virginia. And to the right, the courthouse, where John Brown was tried and hung. I love saying that every time I go by here. This was USD 40 originally, before I got bypassed around the town to our left someplace out of sight. Instead of going back to USD 40, we'll stay straight ahead to pick up westbound 51 to US 11. Hope you all got that. 340 turn left there, but we're staying this way, 51. Which will take us to Inwood, West Virginia. Got something happening here. A lot of traffic for West Virginia. Things here are different. And up ahead, the crossing of the CSX Shenandoah River line, whatever it's called. With a distant station. What's Charlestown Station? Okay. And up ahead, the crossing of Norfolk Southern. To the right goes to Shenandoah Junction, about five, six miles. I've never run by this time, guys. Sorry. Now we're entering 
Inwood, West Virginia. A place that's changed a bit since my last visit, last millennium. More developments. We passed some a little ways back. Up ahead at the light is US 11, which will turn left and take southbound towards Winchester, Virginia. And now south on it, and departing inward. Up ahead got a crossing of sorts, probably a CSX line. Could be Winchester and Western as well. Yeah, that's what it is. We're now crossing back into Virginia. As I said before, this route crosses state lines several times. Another CSX crossing here, and a cool granary directly behind. And there's the line itself. Used to always pass here back in the 80s and 90s and see all this cool stuff. And continuing on, our next hot spot will be Winchester. They're getting a bit hot out there. We began in the 40s, now it's getting into the 60s. Another crossing here. But again, no run by. Sorry guys. Now we're entering Winchester, Virginia. We'll be picking up US 50 westbound. This is Winchester, but no cathedral yet. And apparently up ahead, Old Route 11 is closed off. Now it's a pedestrian mall. I hope if I turn right, this will be US 50, or I'm lost. Now south on some other road looking for US 50 and I found it US 50 West we'll be on this road as far as Cool Springs Park and up ahead there the old Pennsylvania Railroad Station As it turns out, this is the original Penn Freight Station here in Winchester. This would be trackside, but no more track. Just an old boxcar. At least the station isn't totally disused. There are a couple of businesses inside it. Some kind of theater in there too, or whatever. In the 80s and 90s, there'd be trains parked by the station, but where the track would have run, I don't know. That way's downtown, and a, and a building there that ends into. So where the track ran, I don't know. Unless, of course, it that ended here. Continuing on again. Now departing the Winchester area. In case you're curious, we've come almost 112 miles. And again up here, one of our one time usual stops. What I believe they call the Hilltop Store. Because we're at the top of a hill. 
Oh, it's called the Round Hill Shopping Center. Okay. I've been here often. I can't remember the name. And again, time lapse for you. Back on 50 westbound. And up here, a place called the other store. I guess that's what folks call it. As opposed to the store we stopped in. Our next mountain up there. But we don't cross it, we curl around it. Just like South Mountain. And there's the mountain you saw earlier. We're about to curl around it. Now in the old US 50 for a bit. They're coming into a place called Gore. The home of the Winchester Western. And there it be. But I've shown you this before in a previously posted video. But have one more look. And again, our slug or calf, choose your name. And down there, what appears to be an eastern shore, Alco. It says Eastern Shore on it and some more stuff next to it. Are we having fun? Always a lot of fun having these around. Over there are some cement cars. We're about to get back into our car though. back on the main road again, which up here goes back down to two lanes. And up over the next hill, we cross back into West Virginia. We cross state lines several times on this route. But up here, back in West Virginia to stay, well, so to speak. Got some traffic today on US 50, but not that bad though. Still, my kind of road, a mountain road. I'm not a beach boy, I'm a mountain man. Just across Bear Garden Mountain. This is Hampshire County, but nothing new about it. And at the bottom of the grade, we enter Cap'n Bridge. And there is a bridge here. Over, I believe, the Kakapon River. Appropriately enough. Downtown Kappen Bridge. A piece of the old road over there as you cross the bridge itself over the Kagapon River. And now ascending Schaffernacker Mountain. And now at the very top, elevation 1265. Okay, that's what it said. 
They were pretty high. In a manner of speaking, anyway. All right, back down. Up here at one time, the road it took a wider swing to the right. I drove over it once before they changed it around, but it swung over that way at one time. But part of it's still there. But once I did go around the curve before they relieved it. How about that? And apparently just crossed Cooper Mountain. Elevation 1607. We're getting higher and higher on this route. Aren't you glad you're watching? I'm now passing through Augusta, West Virginia. Or Augusta, however you choose to pronounce it. Our next hot spot will be Romney. No relation to Mitt. Praise the Lord. Now descending into it. And here we be, Romney. Happy parting, Romney. Part of old US 50 down here on the right. But now closed off, obviously. Imagine the old road, a lot more curves than this one. We passed through a gap in a mountain up ahead. We come most big out the gap. I'm about to cross the south branch of the Potomac, which is paralleled by the South Branch Railway up ahead. Here's the crossing of it with some stuff in the yard there. They do offer excursions on this line as far south as Moorfield, West Virginia which is to the south, that direction. I'm not about to pass the gap I was telling you about. There's the mountain there. And here's the gap. Earned version of the easy pass here. Easy pass through the mountain. And for free. I like other easy passes. Old quarry here on the right, no longer being used. And the quarry bar shut down. Oh, it's up ahead, that was a quarry office. Here's the bar, still open. We don't need jobs, but we need bars. Up here, USC 20 comes in and joins us. We're now passing through Burlington. Just a small place in the middle of nowhere. Unless, of course, you live here, that is the middle of somewhere. More old structures. I bet they're cool to explore. Old structures like that. Now folks turning left, back at you. Been on the road about four hours now. As we depart Burlington. And ascending another mountain. Went through a gap up there. 
Now we're in the gap. We're about to cross the top of the mountain. And I made it, I pedaled all the way up. We're going to continue on US 50, but first we're going to bear north on 220 and look for a side road. A certain side road called Hershey Palo Road. We'll pick up 50 again in a few minutes. Now temporarily northbound on 220. About to turn left onto Hershey Hollow Road. That's a hairpin left. Whoa. But I made it. I will say proceed through Hershey Hollow itself. Now we're in Hershey Hollow. Almost like a sleepy hollow in actuality. There is a logo I hardly ever see around Airway, Philip 66. I tried. At the stop sign, back at US 50. I'm gonna turn right to continue west. Turning left takes you to the Nancy Hanks Memorial. Of course, Nancy Hanks was Abe Lincoln's mother. For those who don't know your history, knowing a very curvy US 50, which only gets curvier the further west you go. A nice old bridge there, all covered. Going north takes you to Kaiser, West Virginia, as does US 220 if I'd have taken it. Our next mountain, Big Savage Mountain. It's an almost totally peaceful US 50. The poor mountains. Here to the left, Dahl's Place. Well, the two L's are left, not the rest of the word Dahl, or Dahl E, whatever. Look whoever's sitting next to me. That's her name. No more cool old dwellings here. No longer being dwelled in, though. We're about to begin winding up Big Savage Mountain. I told you the road gets curvier yet. All these hairpins to the very top. It's been about 10, 12 years since I last passed here. Nothing's changed. Picked up a truck lane. Oh no, trucks. Just a pipsqueak. They were kissing my behind for a while back there. And more hairpins. Needing the hairpins? Here they are. Take as many as you need. Almost at the top. When we get to the top, we'll stop at Saddle Mountain Overlook. We'll overlook Saddle Mountain. Still ascending. Another mile to go for the top. And I can't wait. Some trees aren't green yet. We're so high up that not all trees have changed yet. How about that?
now arriving at the top. Up there is the overlook. We'll go check it out. We'll continue on in a bit. But first... I want to see those places today. Another one of our one-time... I guess often stops, whatever. Just always stop here. We'll check out the Saddle Mountain View. And there it is, Saddle Mountain. Got some wind up here at the top of the mountain. The saddle again. And the road that brought us here. One last time, the saddle, aptly named. And the rest of the rest area. We used to walk in the woods too on occasion, back in my younger days. Want to wind up and have a look? Okay. In fact, back in the 90s, we used to hide up here and do whatever. Just made a U-turn. Heading out now. Gonna continue west on 50. That road over there. And here it is, with more old stuff over there. Sort of, anyway. And more cool stuff along the way. Old barns and things. Nope, not quite. Not passing through Mount Storm, West Virginia. with some services. Some, not a lot. And now an almost dead empty US 50. Just the way I like it. Top of the mountain now. As I said, we're so high up, all the trees haven't gone green yet. Although it's May the 5th, I guess the higher you go, the longer they take. Makes sense. I think. See you later. Our next hot spot will be the towns of Gormania and Gorman. Gorman, Gormania. Sounds like a 70s movie or something. If I were cross state lines some more time, we'll cross into Maryland for a few minutes. The southern tip of Garrett County, Maryland. And then eventually back in West Virginia again. So you gotta stick around. And here it is, Cormania. I last used Route 90. Back in 1986, I came out of there and went this way. Now I'm about to cross the bridge into Maryland, but just temporarily. On this side is Gorman. Gormania to Gorman. And we're departing. Never there. Windmills at the top of the mountain. Never saw before. Wind turbines.
just ascended the Backbone Mountain. Elevation 3095. No wonder all the trees aren't green yet. And we've now come 200 miles from home. Sounds like an old Rolling Stones song title at that time. 200 light years from home. Or so it seems. Now entering a place called Red House. Red House, Maryland. Where are US 219 intersects. Going north to the right takes you to Oakland and Deep Creek Lake. Both of which we'll see you on our return route. More old stuff here. And we'll soon cross back into West Virginia. And up here that happens, crossing state lines again. Back in West Virginia. You do cross a lot of state lines on this route. Pretty cool, huh? Now passing through Aurora, West Virginia. Yes, indeed. Can't make this stuff up. Not much to it, though. Not the parting of Aurora. We're still in Aurora. Didn't depart yet like I thought we did. Okay. More of Aurora. Wouldn't you like to visit here once? Take your vacation here or whatever. Oh, cool dwelling there. Cool structure. Get the point? Alright, now we're departing. I'm pretty sure for good this time. We have a 9% downgrade approaching. My truckers have to stop and check their brakes before attempting it. I guess we're exempt. The trucks must stop. Yeah, but not us. The Cheat Mountain. Elevation 2746. At the bottom of the grade will cross the Cheat River. And finally at the bottom of the grade, after a series of hairpin curves, soon to cross Cheat River. And here it is, our Cheat River crossing. down there somewhere. I tried. Now stopped by the side of the road for a bit. In an effort to get Cheat River down below. But too much growth. Back on the road. At the bottom of the mountain, the trees are more green because we're not as high up. Down here, everything changed. Route 72 there, that takes it north to Rollsburg. Been up there before myself decades back. But at this point, we're almost to our destination. Almost to Cool Springs Park. Though it doesn't look like it. And up ahead, around the bend, we made it. Our destination. Cool Springs Park.
First time in over 10 years for us. You have to Google this place. It's on Google Maps. Here we be. And for the first time ever, we'll look around the grounds a bit. For the first time ever, looking around the grounds here at Cool Springs, old tractors and things. Got a steam tractor right here. I bet that thing goes back a few decades. As does almost everything else in this park. Over here, an overshot wheel. I don't know what it powered, if anything. And down there, waterfowl. Having a conversation. Be a long time before that runs again as bikers pass on Route 50. Even out here, noise pollution. Over here, got some rail equipment, which probably isn't going to run either. At least not anytime soon. There is no rail line that passes by in here. This track's just there for this stuff to sit on. And more old tractors and stuff sitting around here. Over there, a tank engine and a turkey. Dinner. I'm being mooned. Those are Polish turkeys. They keep going, gobbleski, gobbleski, or something like that. Told you. Look what's coming this way now. Another Disney moment, as it had in Cass back in 98. And there he goes, after passing the tank engines. Okay guys, don't do anything dirty. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. Yeah, hello to you too. Hello. I tried to pet him, see if he lets me. Here we go. Well, you feel hot. Been out in the sun too long. Wearing a fur coat too. Got an arrow gauge track here. But of course, nothing running on it. Here's a place you expect to find the American Pickers on History Channel old car there, or whatever it is, old pickup, missing the bed, and stuff you see the picker is always climbing over in each and every episode. Nope, not going to be able to drive this until after a very healthy restoration. Got a cool speedometer though. Nope, not a lot of stuff here that's drivable. Looks like an old Model T there, or Model A or something. If you know what that is, leave me a comment. Yes, indeed. 
The pickers would love this place. All right, head for the store. Having fun. This tractor even has wheels above. I guess in case the gravitational pull changes, they're ready for it. We came to the bridge, so let's cross it. Now about to head on in. Open the door just like you always do. Well, it looks dark in here. First time in high def. Oh, a belly calendar, okay. That's for me. Look where she's gotta go. Everything's here that was here in my last visit in February of 97. I oh, bet that's a load off. She talks just like 1996 and 97 when we were here. She wants to get me a hat that says coal miner on it. Was your father one? You'd be a coal miner's daughter. She actually got that one. Yeah, the deer's still there. That was here on our last visit. No one's bought it in 15 years. Nope, no one's bought that yet. Maybe we should. Interesting place, though. Interesting thing about country stores like this, they sell everything. Even elbow joints. Nice t-shirts there. Hmm. They consider this to be Rollsburg. That's about 10 miles away. Rollsburg proper. They sell everything here. Plumbing and pantyhose. They have pantyhose here right now though. Unless she's wearing it. My department, the Slim Jims. Beef sticks and things. I used to have those. Not really. 15 years later, she's still here. Okay. Oh. She's in the video from 97. Seen folks I haven't seen in 17 Thank years. You Thank you. Thank you. And we're out of here. Hope you enjoyed. She's hiding to somebody at the, at the lunch counter. <laughs> to someone down there. She could be using a cuss word right now, and I wouldn't know it. She knows my mother. Really? Good. He knows your mother. Small world. Hmm. It's interesting. Okay, now we're out of here. I think. I should video every time I stop in there. And no one seems to mind. Even in these post 9 11 days. And there's the frogmobile. But the cow is still on the roof. And I'm finally departing. We're going to go back west on 50. As far as Route 26. And in case you're curious. We came 219 miles from home. Another mountain crossing coming up here. I believe this one is 
laurel mountain. And more of them hairpins. Need I say more? Another long downgrade here. At the bottom of which should be Route 26. As I said, there it is. We'll go northbound on that on our return route, heading towards Kingwood, West Virginia. But first, we're passing through Tunnelton, where I once rode to West Virginia Northern, now abandoned. Oh, there's the turn. Well, something burned down over there. But we're turning here. Now north on WV-26. As you saw. Haven't seen this road in over a decade. But now on Raccoon Valley Road, heading west. As far as the CSX crossing. And here it is. But when I was here back in the 80s, the signals were all CPLs. No more of that. That direction is Grafton, about 16 miles. Over here is the former WS Tower, no longer in use. I guess you call this the Grafton Sub, Cumberland Division West. But I recall when the tower was still in use. No longer. Here you go. For those of you who watch my video where I'm saying, ah, too dark. Here is where I shot that on that dark night. Right smack dab right here. In fact, I think someone commented, I should have visited here in the daytime. Well, here it is. No longer dark. And for those who watch my photo assortment of CSX and other lines, you recall here I shot a picture of a couple of Western Maryland Jeeps passing by. None of that now either. Once upon a time, a siding bore off the main line and came through the woods this way. It ran over there someplace and into the woods for whatever reason. The siding would have ended here and there was some chessy stuff parked on it. But no more chessy stuff and no more siding. Looking back towards the crossing, I once shot a picture here on a very cold day with snow around. Yeah, that's it. But on my last visit here, those were CPLs. What's happening, CSX? CPL haters. Now back on WV-26 and entering Tunnelton. Rode a train here back in 1996, but the line's abandoned now. The West Virginia Northern. Once I got the station here, which I showed you too a few bits back, Now on a brick street, brick paved, whatever, but red, not yellow. 
and our police officer friend no longer lives here. No more cop car parked there. And the restored station. Ditch in the road there. And behind it, the freight station. The trackside view of Tunnelden Station. Restored a bit since my last visit. And about to get lucky. CSX train going eastbound. Upgrade. My last run by here was back in the 80s, believe it or not. Upgrade as I said, hence the shuffers you see at the end. Gee, thanks. Hope that was a friendly toot. Not that I care for this dash units anyway. But on a different note, a sad sight here. Which sees the junction of the CSX line with the West Virginia Northern, the track going off here. But now abandoned. But now the rails end right here. But they just keep going down there, down the grade. And I rode a train here back in 1996. Parts of which are posted on YouTube. The West Virginia Northern and part of the way I got to drive the train myself. But now all gone. Now back at the former passenger station. I wonder if one can tell anything inside. Oh. They tried to restore something here. Got the original benches there. Not peeking in from the street side. I was at those doors over there a few seconds ago. Okay, restoration job here. As good as one can expect, anyway, all things considered. And now by the freight station here at the Tunnelton. Obviously. Lots of the sign says anyway, tunneled in. Now departing on our brick road. As I said, red, not yellow. Back on Route 26, northbound. Too bad about the WVN being all gone. The West Virginia Northern. What a drag. The day of the train ride, we had our lunch in that building right there. No need for that anymore. Departing Tunnelton. It's now 6.01 p.m. We left around 10.20 this morning. When did we get back around our way? Looking at about a 10 o'clock arrival from this point. Now proceeding through Howellsville. 
during our trip in 96 in the WVN, we stopped at the crossing for a run by. Of course, that's all history now. The line's abandoned. So you gotta buy my DVD. Thanks. But here it is, Houseville Crossing. No longer a crossing. The track's all gone. No more track. Back on Route 26, northbound. Heading for Kingwood. And here it is. Entering Kingwood. This road ends here. Gotta pick up Route 7 eastbound towards Oakland, Maryland. And there it is. Hang a right. But I've been straight before. Another place I haven't seen in over a decade. You see that there mountain up there? I gotta climb that. And here again, another crossing of the Cheat River. Our last one. There's 72 again. We passed that route earlier. It's down there somewhere. But now I'm gonna pedal up this here mountain. Hold on. Yeah, here it pins again. And up here there's a spot I used to stop. I have to stop for a quick look, just like the old days, the 80s and 90s. There is a killer view to the north anyway. Center Terra Alta, Alta, however you say it. Another quaint mountain town. Got the site of Terra Alta train station, but it's gone. I took shots of it back when it existed, but it's gone. Oh no. Thank you, CSX. Back on the road after a sad discovery. There was a white track down there where the B&O turned trains around. But that's gone too. It come out of there and gone that way. And dead ended. That's long been gone. We're out of here. Next hot spot, Oakland, Maryland. Drove across back into Maryland. And passing through Hutton. We're back in our state, but got miles to go before we sleep. Now here we are, arriving in Oakland. After a 10 year absence. For me, anyway. Picking up 219 northbound here. As far as I-68. And the courthouse for Garrett County. Now it's a party, Oakland. We're at 7.02 in the evening, 7.03. It's about four hours back from here, or it was in the old days, and about 200 miles. So let's see what happens. And down there, part of Deep Creek Lake. And up here, we cross over it. 
on a bridge that was built in 1987. The first bridge was a truss bridge, long gone. I'll do a video of it though. The part of the deer, the Deep Creek area. Our next hot spot will be Accident. Accident, Maryland, believe it or not. That's the name of this town. And downtown, Accident. As I said before, you can't make up stuff like this. Believe me. Again, very quaint. And already about to depart. Up here, pick up I 68, which takes us to I 70, which takes us back home. The last leg of our journey. And it's been a good one. Now, crossing Negro Mountain. As I keep saying, you can't make up stuff like this. Here we cross the Continental Divide, the eastern one. Which means that the water behind us eventually flows to the Gulf of Mexico, while the water on this side eventually makes it to the Chesapeake Bay. A true divide. And now we're east of it. Back in Bay Territory, Bay Country, whatever. Now passing Frostburg and descending into Cumberland. Nine mile descent. And we just passed the spot where they're rebuilding Noah's Ark, supposedly. But it's been 25 years now. If Noah took that long to build his ark, we'd have no animals right now. They'd all have drowned. Go figure. And now this is it. Cumberland. The Queen City of the Alleghenies. As they call it. The b at Queen, Queen City Station here at one time but it got torn down to put this road through. Interesting place in the Potomac Valley. We're now about to depart. The lighting is beginning to shift as it gets darker outside. From here on, the route is rather straightforward. We take this back to I-70 in the Hancock area, then 70 back to Baltimore. So won't be showing too much of this. Now in the Hancock area, we just picked up I-70 eastbound. And now thanks to time lapse in the Hagerstown area, Running out of tip space, so time lapse is all you'll see from this point. Now back in the Frederick area, just crossed over US 340, the road that we took some of earlier. Another 55 miles, and our labors are over. Well, mine are anyway. Well, where do you come from? Again, more time lapse. Finally, back in the Baltimore area. I'm picking up 695 clockwise. And now, finally, back in our part of the world. The next exit's ours.
and our first traffic light in over five hours. And finally, back in town. And back in the hood after a successful day. Traveled a lot of miles today. <laughs>